Welcome to Coding Adventures. In today's episode, we're gonna implement these googly eyes that follow the mouse cursor. <laughs> this is such a fun project and it's probably the smallest coding project that we implemented here on the channel. We only need to know a little bit of math and then the coding is probably done in about 50 lines of code or even less. So uh, this is in continuation of yesterday project, uh, the one with the analog clock. Therefore, without further ado, let's begin coding. <laughs> All right, welcome back. So I'm here in my code editor. We're gonna write the JavaScript program to implement these uh, eyes that follow the mouse. But before we actually start coding, let's start with a little bit of planning on our notebook. <laughs> so I hope you brought a notebook with you if you want to take notes. Uh, in my case here, I'm gonna just draw and plan a little bit this uh, small program. So uh, let's... Uh, visualize here what we want to create to implement. I'm going to draw the canvas. And as, an, as you know, bro, uh, the canvas in the environment that we are using, it's 800 by 600 pixels with the origin in the top left corner here. And the co X coordinates go to the right and the Y coordinates goes to the bottom. All right. So uh, we want to implement these googly eyes that follow the mouse cursor, which are nothing more than two circles and perhaps the mouse cursor, let's say it's here somewhere. And these eyes are looking at the mouse cursor. So basically the pupil of the eye, these parts should be basically be oriented, something like this. It's like they are looking towards the mouse cursor. <laughs> As you can see, it's all about drawing a few circles on the screen. And these ones are kind of fixed. The only difference is in this, uh, inner circles that should change the position as we move the cursor around. So if we move the mouse cursor this way or that way, this circle should basically, <laughs> it looks like a cat. <laughs> this uh, circle should move around on the canvas. All right, so how can we do that one? And I said that this one is similar to the program that we implemented yesterday, the analog clock. And that's because uh, in both programs, we are basically doing some transformations from the Cartesian system of coordinates to the polar one and back. And actually yesterday we converted from polar system of coordinates to Cartesian and now we're gonna do the, other, the opposite way. So let's remember what we did yesterday. So we said yesterday we converted from polar, which nothing else but basically saying we converted from an angle to an X and Y on the canvas. So we converted from polar to Cartesian. And now, we're gonna learn how to convert basically from Cartesian uh, to polar coordinates. And of course, later on, we're gonna convert back to Cartesian because we want to display things on the screen, but that's uh, <laughs> the same thing as the first one here. So uh, what we did yesterday was basically when we implemented the analog clock, we had a particular point, this one, and um, and we knew for this point, basically, the angle that it makes with the horizontal axis, the theta, and we knew the r. Basically, we converted from knowing this uh, distance from a certain point, from a certain origin, and knowing also the angle, we converted that into an x and y coordinate, finding out which are the coordinates of this point. And in this way, what we did yesterday, by varying the angle theta and keeping r constant, of course, we implemented this analog clock, which is basically we made the hand of the clock go round and round on a circle. All right, and <laughs> refer to the project from yesterday if you want to see this one. Now we're gonna do the opposite. Let's say we have, let's say, we have, we know already, we need to figure out the angle. So it's the other way around. Here is the mouse cursor in our case. And what we need to do, we know, um, we need to figure out, we know the X and Y of a certain point. Of course, we know the X and Y of the mouse cursor because it's our cursor that we move on the canvas. 
And now we need to figure out back what will be the distance from a certain point or from the origin to this one, to the mouse cursor. And of course, more importantly, the angle that it makes with that point. And actually, in the current implementation that we'll do today, um, we'll, not use, um, we'll not use at all the distance or r here. We are not interested in calculating, but we are interested in calculating this particular theta. And why is that? Well, <laughs> let's uh, remember what we want to implement here. We want to implement that googly eye. So um, let me draw an eye here, or attempt to draw one, which is a circle, like we said. And let's say the pupil should come in this position when the mouse cursor is here. So in other words, we need, if you notice, from the center of this circle and the mouse cursor here, you can imagine there is a line. And if we are able to figure out what is the angle of this line, so <laughs> this angle here, theta, we'll be able basically to very easily draw a particular, we don't even know, have to draw the <laughs> uh, this line, but we'll be able to figure out what is the coordinate here and then draw a small circle. And that will be our implementation. All right, so a lot of theory. So how can we figure out this theta first? Well, imagine this one is a right triangle here. So uh, from the mouse cursor that we know it's at x and y coordinate, we know this time the x and y. We need to figure out theta. So we know the tangent of theta. Let's write it first this way. Tangent of theta is the opposite uh, leg, which is, let's name this one dy, over the adjacent leg. Let's name this one dx. So that's dy and dx. In other words, theta is the r tangent or inverse tangent of dy over dx. All right, so it's a very, very simple formula as you can see here. And um, we figured this out, <laughs> pretty simple. And now what we have to do is to go into our code and implement this formula, figuring out what is the angle that is made between the mouse cursor and a certain point, which is the center of the eye, and then draw this, make this circle, draw this pupil there. So when the angle changes, we're gonna redraw here the circle. And if the mouse cursor, let's say, go on this side here at a certain point and makes this bigger theta, we're gonna draw here the pupil. And this way we'll have this uh, funny effect of a uh, eye that follows the mouse cursor. But it's nothing else than a simple calculation in the coordinates <laughs> uh, canvas. All right, so let's see how we implement this one, all this formula in the code. And just for the reference, and I mentioned that we yesterday we created the other formulas, actually before switching to this one, like a quick recap, these were the formulas that we basically used when we calculated in reverse. Uh, from polar to Cartesian, and today we're gonna use this formula to calculate from Cartesian to polar. And as I, I mentioned that we are not interested in figuring out also R, which is also something that you can come out with easily, but if you want, we can calculate this one as well. It's using Pythagora in this triangle, or here in codegapi.com or P5JS, this R, we can calculate it using a dist function. But perhaps about this one in another <laughs> implementation. All right, so I'm gonna keep my notes handy here and um, I'm gonna see how to implement this particular formula in the code here. Perhaps before starting implementing the eye, I should implement a small, <laughs> small line that follows the mouse cursor, like a needle. I, 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 I like to call that one a needle, right? So um, imagine a needle in the middle of the canvas that goes around and around following the mouse cursor. So uh, let's do that one. So let's have a function here. Um, display needle. And this needle we know the X and Y, let's fix the X and Y being, let's say the, the other end of the needle and uh, the, other, this, the other end will be the mouse cursor, all right? And this needle will have a certain 
size d. So, so uh, again, let me draw here just to be clear what we want to implement <laughs> uh, before starting with the eyes. Coming back, so we have our canvas here, and we're gonna create in the middle of the canvas. We want to draw a small needle that follows the mouse cursor. We know the mouse cursor coordinates. This time we're gonna use the uh, values that are available in P5.js. So it is basically our mouse X and mouse Y. Okay, so these are the coordinates of the mouse. And now we want to draw this segment of length D, we said there, so the one uh, and it's uh, fixed at x and y and has the length d and it's trying to reach the mouse cursor it's actually not <laughs> not reaching the mouse cursor because of the uh, d size we can move the mouse cursor anywhere on the canvas but this kind of segment will try to go and follow the mouse cursor always trying to point at the mouse cursor so let's start with this one and then we're gonna see how to implement the eye around it and as we said We'll do all this by calculating this theta here, that is dy over dx, or our tangent of that one. <laughs> Too much talk already. We put so much uh, theory in this exercise. All right, so let's figure out the angle. Uh, we're gonna name the a variable angle here. And basically the function to do that, we said it's our tangent of dy over dx and dy it's um, if we are looking really carefully back to the drawing board here dy is actually mouse x mouse y minus y and dx it's mouse x minus x all right so because the angle is the same even if we are basically uh, elongating this line till it reaches the cursor. So in this case, we're gonna consider this as being dy and this as being dx. So we know dy, we know dx. So let's try to implement that formula in the code. So we said we can use the inverse tangent or arc tangent of mouse y minus y uh, over mouse x minus x. All right. And now <laughs> we know the angle and with, with the angle known, we can convert. So we already converted from uh, Cartesian to polar. We can now convert back to Cartesian and draw that kind of line using the formulas that we used yesterday. So basically, let's remember those formulas, lots and lots of formulas. But let's remember quickly those ones. So these ones are uh, these formulas. We're going to determine the point here by uh, starting from a certain point in the center, plus r cos cosinus of the angle, and then uh, r sine of that angle. Uh, I'm gonna write them in the code, and I hope that makes sense for you. <laughs> so uh, we know already one uh, uh, end of the line, it's at this coordinate, let's figure out the other one. So let y x2 is basically x plus d times cosinus of angle and y2 is y plus d times sinus of angle, like this. And now we can draw a line from x, y to x2, y2. <laughs> so, and and um, you know what? Let's display, let's call this function in a loop so we basically can animate it. We're gonna define here the loop function, which is called uh, for us automatically by the browser up to 60 times per second. We're gonna clear the canvas and then say display needle. Let's uh, fix one point of the line in the center of the canvas. And let's say this line has 200 pixels. All right, so let's run it. <laughs> it kind of moved, but jumps around in a very weird way, right? So what causes that problem? Well. That problem is caused by the arctangent function. And let me show you something interesting here. Wikipedia, arct, uh, 2, arctangent 2, all right. 
Now, in many programming languages, JavaScript included, actually says here, Arctangent was first, uh, first appearing in Fortran. Uh, this function appeared in basically each and every programming language since, uh, since 61 till today. And it's kind of a replacement of Arctangent when we are working on a Cartesian system of coordinates. It, Arctangent 2, we use it similarly to this one, but so we just put two here and with one difference. Notice here what's happening. If we do this division with Arctangent, like we used in initially, when this one becomes zero, it's division by zero. Also, if you read carefully here, and if you learned in math, probably in the school, uh, if you want to ca calculate <laughs> correctly the if you do want to do the transformation, you also have to consider the quadrant in which the point is. Um, basically, it's expressed here like this. So, therefore, we are not using arctangent function, but arctangent 2 that takes these two values, not as a single value, basically not as a fraction, but actually as two separate values, separated by comma. And arctangent 2 will do the calculation inside. We'll see when this one is 0, not avoid division by 0. We'll also check quadrants and so on and so forth. So you have to check this uh, article from uh, Wikipedia if you're interested in the math or refer to your math textbooks uh, again um, for this one. But just remember, each time in uh, JavaScript or any other programming languages, you have to do these conversions from Cartesian to polar, use arctangent 2, not arctangent function. So let's run now the program. And indeed, our line is following the mouse cursor. So uh, even if I'm going further away or if I'm coming close, I can basically rotate this line. And this technique is basically used every time you want to orient different objects to the mouse cursor, like this line, or maybe that uh, pupil in the, <laughs> in the googly eyes. Um, let's also put a circle here at the end to make it a little bit more interesting. Five, like display needle, and let's run it. <laughs> All right. So uh, now it's a question of how to transform this program into that one with googly eyes. It's uh, just a matter of just drawing different shapes. But let's play a little bit more with this, uh, this <laughs> needle before that. What if we create not one, but multiple ones? Let's do that, just a simple exercise. Let's create a field of needles that try to reach to the mouse cursor. So let's uh, loop on horizontal, perhaps x starts from zero, x less than 800. And uh, maybe we should increment in 30 pixels increment, something like that. And let's look the same y is 0, y less than 600, y plus equal 30. And let's <laughs> move this line inside the nested for loop. And instead of having a size of 200, which will be too big, let's make it 10 and see how it looks like. Oops. <laughs> Let's not put the center um, in the center of the screen, but actually at x and y coordinates. Basically, create a field of needles. <laughs> Let's make them uh, a little bit bigger. Perhaps 20 pixels here. <laughs> and let's say this one looks like magnetic needles to me. Display magnetic needle. <laughs> and make this small small and a little bit smaller all right <laughs> it's an interesting effect notice how all these arrows are trying to orient towards the mouse cursor uh, we, we could end the lesson here this is a basically a small project on its own actually let me share this one with you so this one is magnetic needles let me share this one on the chat it's fun on its own Right? Let me go on the chat here. But nevertheless, we said that today we're going to implement those googly eyes. So let's make a copy of this one and see how to can we transform it and to, uh, <laughs> into those eyes. All right. So we don't need all these forks. Let's uh, come back and revert all this code and have just one magnetic needle here. And uh, 
Oops, x is not defined, of course. It was like this. And the second size. All right, so uh, perhaps we should name this one draw i or display i. And let's display an i. Actually, we need two i's, right? So we're going to call this function twice. <laughs> um, and we want to center them on the screen. So this one is not at 400, it's perhaps at 200. And this one, it's at 600. I don't know. We can, um, <laughs> we can change them. But see, already the two needles are kind of following the mouse, similar to the uh, that I pupil. So <laughs> let's try to uh, arrange this uh, function a little bit to look like we are doing an I. All right. So what we have to do here is to basically draw a circle. And um, yeah, we'll draw a circle here, right? Circle at x and y. And this will be the radius. Let's see. <laughs> All right. We have the two eyes. And now here, we don't have to draw this line at all, right? Only the small circle will keep it, <laughs> but not there, uh, not not exactly at the end here, not exactly uh, of length D. Um, perhaps if we're coming back to the drawing board, let's plan a little bit this one. Let's figure out what will be the that kind of uh, distance. So this will be the big circle. And we want to draw the pupil here. This is the center of the circle, right? This one is X, Y. And in the previous case, x to y2 was at the uh, edge of the circle, but we need to figure out this one. So uh, we already, let's say this one is following the mouse cursor, which is here. We're already passing this distance d, right? So perhaps here it's at maybe 75% of d, right? And the remaining here, we're gonna the twenty five percent. We're gonna use it for uh, the radius of the pupil. This part here, something like that. I think will work. Let's see. So, um, if <laughs> right now uh, we are placing the circle exactly at the same distance, basically, which is kind of on the big circle here. If we run it again, yep, <laughs> the small circle is on the big circle. And if <laughs> let's increase a little bit the radius so have fun. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Perhaps if we are drawing uh, uh, frog eyes, it will be more correct to do it like this, but uh, <laughs> we have other intention here. So let's figure out a second D distance, uh, pupil distance, pupil distance, which we, we said maybe 0.75% uh, of D, right? And now the second coordinates, this will be PD for the circle. All right, it looks better. Oh, but the radius we hard coded the 30, we reserved already 25% of, uh, of D. So should be fine, like this. Uh, let's have it in a variable like uh, pupil radius is 0 0.25 times D, or D minus pupil distance. Let's have here PR, and let's see it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's fill this up. So this one will be fill with black. And initially when we draw the eye, let's have this one fill with white. And run it. <laughs> and this is exactly what we intended to achieve here. Now we can make this one even more fun if we want. Uh, let's try to make them a little bit less big, <laughs> uh, like this, and maybe get them closer, 300, 500, they are too far away. Okay, I like this, like this uh, ice in this way. And now if we want, we can even draw a smaller circle inside this one, um, <laughs> up to your imagination, or we can draw the pupil in different colors, or make colored eyes. Uh, let's try to draw something here at the circle. Um, x2 plus pr on 2 
and y2 plus pr r2 and pr4 something like this <laughs> yeah uh, well uh, you can have fun with this one of course uh, we didn't orient this one if you want you can orient it but uh, in the same way using a similar formula so uh, <laughs> this is the effect that we wanted to achieve uh, let me share the program with you on the chat it's a very small program. We said uh, 50 lines of code, actually it's 25 lines of code with plenty of white spaces in between. Nice. And uh, basically with this one, <laughs> we conclude our today uh, project. It's a very small coding project uh, for beginners. You also learned about um, converting from polar coordinates to Cartesian and from Cartesian to polar. We went a little bit over all over the place with the theory, but uh, I still hope that uh, you had fun with this project. So if you create variations on this one, if you can use different colors, uh, make sure to uh, put your uh, versions in the chat. With this, I'm saying uh, thank you for watching, uh, uh, happy coding, and see you next time. <laughs>